Evening all. Okay, this is the King's Crusher radio show. Uh, I thought we could go over some FIDE World Cup games this week, uh, which is being held in Paris, France, September 22nd to October 5th. Some very, very strong participants include Nakamura, Ivanchuk, Gelfand, Wang Hao, Caruana, and others. Okay, so let's have a look at one game from the event. Nakamura against Caruana caught my eye. Um, I hope audio is okay just before we go on on play chess. Um, and I'll uh, just make sure this chat is here on Twitch. Um, audio and board is okay. Just checking board before we move on. Uh, Good. Okay, so uh, Nakamura against Caruana. Um, uh, right. So this this caught my eye. Something very very interesting happened in this game. Nakamura kicked off with d4, and Caruana uh, reacted. Okay, so d4 from Naka, knight f6. And after c4, Caruana played g6. And this move already is a bit of a surprise from Nakamura. Uh, it's kind of an anti Grunfeld surprise system that you might want to try in your own games. It's the move F3. It's quite an unusual move, but uh, you know, gaining popularity. Um, someone who introduced me to YouTube years back, Majnu, recommended this system many years back in one of his videos. I think it's it's very very interesting. Um, so now. D5 is played anyway, and it's quite different from the normal Grunfeld. After C takes D, Knight takes, White can play E4, and the structure is intact here on the Queen side because the Knight's not on C3, so there's no Knight takes C3. So the Knight goes to B6, and we see Knight C3, Bishop G7. So Black's still trying to target D4. You know, intuitively that's that seems to be a good idea. To put pressure on d4. Uh, so bishop e3 supporting d4. Now black castles, and we see queen d2. Now even more pressure on d4 with knight c6. So a lot of things coordinating on d4. White here just castles. So that adds more protection with the rook. We see queen d6. <clears throat> and now a very aggressive move indeed, h4. So Nakamura is a very exciting, aggressive player at times. And this looks to be like a prepared you know, line, very dangerous line, because it looks as though the queen d6 did vacate d8, as though there's going to be even more pressure on d4. And we see that now. So all of black's play seems entirely logical. To put loads of pressure on d4. It's a groom field with a bit of a difference though that you know there was no c5, the c pawn's still at home. And we see in this position knight b5 kicking the queen to d7. And now h5 getting on with an h5 attack, which seems rather crude just to take and maybe bishop h6. And isn't there a problem with this knight b5? Surely the knight's holding up d4. But if it's kicked, can't black just take on d4? So we see a6, knight c3. And black now taking with knight takes d4. And it gets quite interesting. Has Naka just lost the pawn for not much? Well, he takes on g6. And black here uh, plays a move which is not uh, theory, uh, actually. This, this move isn't theory uh, that's played next. It's the move h takes g6. And this allows something quite subtle and really, really uh, dangerous. You'd think that the Fianchetto bishop is enough to protect the king here on h8 uh, for the moment. But uh, there's a very, very powerful forcing move. Um, can you guess what white plays in this position? Anyone? If I give you. Uh, like 20 seconds here, or I could just show you. Uh, give me 20 seconds. What does white play here in this position?
Anybody? Want to hazard a guess? Okay, I'll show you. It's actually just bishop takes d4, and the point's not immediately apparent. You might think, okay, queen queen takes d4 in the game is played, which looks like a shocking mistake. Because uh, now we just see queen e1, and with the rook hanging here, black's just having to give up his queen, and it might as well be end of game, actually. This is just a very big advantage uh, for white. Where does the queen go without losing the rook? You might think, well, what, what was going on here for this to happen? So before we go into queen takes d1, the point is that if bishop takes d4, I've checked this out a little bit with engines before, trying to show you this, because I, I didn't know myself exactly what was the reason here. The reason is queen h6 doesn't actually threaten anything with the queen here. We've got h8 guarded. Any rook d4, we can recharge h8 from afar. So that is not the point. The point here is that white has a gigantic threat, which black can't really seem to do anything about. And that threat is actually knight g e2 coming up. What on earth can we do? to knight g e2. Uh, you know, if c5, I think just knight g e2, and it's all of a sudden it is really dangerous, you know, for h8 again. There's no, there's no defense here. Once we knock out d4, then we can go into h8. Uh, so, okay, this this is this is the reason. This, this is, seems absolutely hopeless. You know, if we play e5, queen h8, what do we do? Does anyone? Because I don't think there's any any move here. Uh, you know, there's no bishop e3. The knight's protecting d1. There's just no move in this position. In that example of of c5, there's just no move. So in the game, we saw queen takes d4, and you know this might as well be end of game. Queen takes d1, giving up the queen. Knight a4, okay, there's a little bit of counterplay to extinguish, if you can call it that. B for a kick in the knight. E5, okay, bishop f5. Now f4, which locks out the bishop now. White's well, looking forward perhaps soon to play queen h4. But now actually a, a5, to be fair, it did start to look a little bit on the scary side with a5, uh, activating the rook. So, you know, potentially these guys are working together. So it does require care and attention. Knight f3, a4, trying to keep the lines closed with b4 now. And this provokes Kat Karana to play another aggressive, uh, an aggressive looking move actually, knight b3 to his credit. Trying to keep some, some pressure on white. A takes, and now a3, and it looks as though this is a dangerous pawn. How can it be stopped? Well, it's just blocked by a1 with this queen c3. The queen's going to come back to a1 if needed. So we see e6, knight e3, a2, now blocking the pawn, just blocking, bishop f8. And this gives white the chance now to just take on f5, g takes. And still, you know, there's some potential dangers here if black gets enough time for this sort of thing. Uh, we see b5, uh, c6, trying to open up the c file. This is just taken. Rook d c8. And now bishop c4, rather cruel. Uh, so if b5, we just take and we're protecting c6. Uh, so rook takes c6. Threatening b5. This is extinguished with knight d4, attacking the rook. The rook moves back. King c2. Pardon me, king c2. Uh, so that was always like to, to, against this. You know, it's not a big deal. Now g4, and it's Black's king that's going to be in trouble soon. F takes, and now f5, and Black's king is is in real trouble. And there's opportunities like this now. So here, Caruana finally resigned. It looks like a a pretty hopeless uh, situation. Uh, 
for example e takes queen c1 but it's probably even stronger in e6 as well as it looks as though you know black's king safety is now in question and there's no counterplay here b5 is sealed up so that was interesting it's like an opening trap was fallen into uh in this in this line so it appears that the key mistake here if we go back was not playing f takes g6 if f takes g6 was played then I'm not sure how this works uh, now because this kind of thing, uh, I don't think knight e2 is a problem because we have e5, I think. Uh, the bishop is stopped from c4 with the knight on b6. So this is looking safe for black. So I think that's why theoretically f takes g6 is, is played rather than what was played in the game which was this h takes g6 so interestingly it seems bishop takes d4 is is giving white a winning position here uh so you know if bishop takes d4 i just believe this is a helpless position because of knight e2 and i, I did engine check this a little bit earlier so fascinating really to see this kind of trap at such a high level uh just on move 15 but it's in a rare you know system against the Grunfeld. So let's go on to um, another game. So I thought that was that was quite interesting. Um, so Ivanchuk against Grischuk was an interesting battle. So Ivanchuk playing white plays d4, and we see knight f6 from Grischuk, c4 g6. And another Grunfeld with d5. Bishop f4 is Ivanchuk's choice. Bishop g7, e3. Solid system. Castles, rook c1. Bishop e6. And this does tempt white here to kind of release the central tension uh, by playing c5. Um, if you know we we don't want this bishop embarrassed if cd you know the knight takes looks actually quite nice for black doesn't seem to be such a big deal there could be a, a dangerous gambit gambiting c7 maybe as well um it could give black lots of play this, this sort of position potentially um you know there's pressure um so i don't know imanchuk wanted to keep things closed he played c5 so we see c6 from black, b4, <clears throat> okay, knight bd7, bishop d3, knight h5, the, the bishop is protected with knight e2, so even should not, not minding giving up his dark square bishop, it's not taken, just f6. As though black wants to put this bishop back and play e5, h4, Bishop is put back as though e5 is on the cards. Um, ah, oh, press play button. Someone's board doesn't. Um, <clears throat> so now, um, <clears throat> pardon me, we see uh, Bishop h2, and it looks as though you know g4 might be arriving on the soon scene, but this is stopped with f5 f4 which does fix all of white's pawns a bit and this bishop looks a bit weak positionally you know if it was a club game we might consider g4 a bit of a weakness here with pawns here and here it seems g4 is a bit sensitive in fact uh, now the knight goes back to just plonk itself on g4 queen d2 knight df6 so it seems black is really comfortably making use of the weaknesses in white's position for the moment knight d1 knight e4 okay and after bishop takes e4 d takes e4 liberates this bishop it looks as though black has a very nice position here a4 and now b6 and still even presses for an attack with h5 uh, even though the bishop, you know, is seemingly preempting this, so g takes h5, but it does mean bishop h4. At least this bishop is a bit more alive. Bishop f6. This is just taken. Knight takes f6. Knight f2. 
So is this knight heading somewhere interesting? King h8, as though the rook is interested in just putting pressure down that g file. Castles, rook g8. Looks a little bit dangerous for white's king, this rook staring at it on the g file. I'm not too convinced. Um, this is a success for white. Whatever's happened at the opening here, I wouldn't say it's a great success personally. Uh, B5 now carrying on a kind of queenside initiative, but this is just rook c8. After c takes, queen takes b6. A5, queen b7. Now b takes c6 is played, rook takes. So, okay, some rooks come off, queen takes, rook c1. And now a very dangerous move is played from black, queen a6. So, eyeing e2 uh, but there's a particular point of this which is very very painful now uh, and abrupt after rook c5 can you guess what black plays in this position and it still kind of pursues believe it or not the attack on g2 so if i give you 20 seconds here what does black play in this position to help pursue an attack on g2. Can anyone see a key resource in this position for black? Anyone? Now knight d5, no, no, knight d5 doesn't really pursue the, the attack on g2 in any way. It looks nice and positional to play knight d5. Um, but you know, white might start wriggling with knight h3 to g5, potentially. And then you've got a piece to look after on d5 of your bishop, which might be actually attacked. So that might not be ideal to play knight d5. If someone suggested that. Any other suggestions? So the suggestion of bishop c4. Yes, Jimmy John X, well done. So bishop c4. You see, the thing about this, which is rather awkward, is that after the knight moves, can you see what black has now in this position? If I give you 20 seconds here. So the game continuation, it's about to abruptly end. The game is about to abruptly end. Can anyone spot it? Yes, yeah, an unusual looking tactic, Bishop F1. But what do we do about G2? It's pretty painful. I mean, it looks pretty diabolical, really. Um, you know, we don't want this raging attack. Uh, so Imanchuk actually resigned here. I don't know, G3 looks as though, you know, what is it doing? We have this check, for example. And we've got all sorts of nasties here. Maybe just Rook G2 check. So we can't go to H3 without Rook takes F2. And if here, then uh, this starts to look nasty. Maybe just knight g4 using that, that pin looks nasty. So that looks horrendous as an example. Um, I don't think g4 would fare much better. Knight takes g4. Doesn't look very nice. So even if it had to resign there, it does, does look like a disastrous type of like opening that he had. Okay, so... Uh, so from that Grunfeld, it seems black did well uh, to tempt white forward on the queen side at that critical moment of bishop e6. Tempting white to release the tension seemed to work out really well. Um, this reminds me of some plans in, in the Karakon. You get this bishop out of the way later. Once you've got white to release the tension, you sort of get prepared for e5 later. It seemed to be that sort of plan, getting the bishop out of the way and preparing e5. It's a logical kind of counter reaction when white 
releases the tension. So let's go on to another game. It seemed to work out very well for black. So, okay, Nakamura against back row. So is Etin back row, um, how did he do against Nakamura? So D4 from Naka, D5, C4, and we see E6. Queen's Gambit declined, Knight C3, Bishop E7. And now we see an exchange on D5. E takes D5, Bishop F4. Black plays C6 here, and now E3. Now this Bishop is you know, free to roam to F5 now, which it does. Now an aggressive move, G4, which gains a bit of space on the King's side, can be double-edged if these can be proven to be a bit, you know, weaknesses. Bishop e6, and now h4. Wow, h4 is played in this position. So what is actually going on with h4? If this is taken, is it just about lasting pressure? Perhaps if it's taken, you know, knight f3. That's that's interesting. Um, actually, I should have really checked this position out. It wasn't taken anyway. Um, knight d7 was played. Bishop g3, protecting the pawn now. Knight g f6. So, okay, eyeing g4, that's protected. It looks as though it's a bit airy, this. I don't know how many of you would play like this. Um, would would any of you play like this with white against the queen's gambit uh, decline to take on d5 and put these pawns like this it's an interesting setup isn't it so who do you think's better if i gave you 20 seconds just to say like who do you think's better white or black here anyone at this stage Black, some people like playing black hair. Um, okay, black. So you all prefer black at the moment uh, from, from stream. Um, so, okay, knight b6 is played, bishop d3. Now knight c4, a bit adventurous. Okay, he's attacking b2, that's just protected, queen e2. And now c5, which slightly weakens d5. Is black pushing his luck? And in fact, in this position, again, we get this kind of abrupt forcing move sequence. And I don't know why Nakamura's got access to forcing moves, which seem, after he's played them, to be quite, you know, as if it was within our reach if, if we'd considered these forcing moves. But the forcing move played here is uh, bishop takes c4 and simply now can you see what white plays in this position it's a bit analogous to his game against caruana because there's it's not like an immediate obvious uh blowout for black uh what does white play here if i gave you 20 seconds starting from now so white play what, what do you think Naka plays in this position? What was the idea of taking on c4? No, it's, it's not. The idea is not d takes c5 funny enough it's it's crazy looking that it seems black's got d5 you know adequately adequately covered by three pieces but d5 is played here anyway because now if if we move the bishop back perish the four you know this is looking terrible because of d6 you know, what do we do here? Were we going to go back in the box? We can't have this position. You know, th this is just diabolical, surely, this position. We'd end up playing knight c7 soon. 
so no we can't really go back here um, you know if we go back to c8 then d6 again and we can like just pin that bishop you know isn't that like end of game but what's more subtle about this is that after knight takes d5 white castles queen sides and although it's not immediately winning material or anything it's this gigantic threat of e4 which is i don't know what black on earth can do about this idea of e4 for example if bishop f6 you know knight takes and then just e4 what is black doing here about this pin now it looks so simple it looks a little bit like the caruana tactic in a way you know the disasters on the d file seem to be uh, a theme of this tournament as far as nakamura playing white is concerned what on earth does black do about e4 here does anyone have any answer to e4 if i gave you 20 seconds here how would you how would you face this so if I give you 20 seconds here, what would you play as black as the best move? You see, you can't play knight take c3 attacking the queen, because unfortunately it's, it's check when we take on d8. It's going to be with check. So what was played in the game did seem to be the best of the worst which was to play queen a5 at least to try and at least get this a2 pawn so the question now is is this really worth a piece well Necker takes on d5 bishop takes rook takes and okay he loses the a2 pawn queen c2 looks like a good sensible uh defensive move in fact this rook is a bit loose here to c freeze I, I expect this is you know but this is now played you know attacking the rook and it's defended with b3 and and it looks as though well queen a1 check is that dangerous this is what occurred queen a1 check the queen drops back then what queen a6 now it looks as though f1 is dangerous or is it Necker actually just protects his second rank with a very nice move, just rook h2. So he doesn't mind this queen f1 check. You know, maybe just. Well, actually, queen f1 check, we just retreat here anyway, just rook d1. We don't need to even move the king. So black castled. And now rook a2, attacking the queen, queen b5. It looks just a, a case now after knight e2. Of being a piece down he's done it again this is just move 23 someone over 2700 has just lost an entire piece it's in back row one of the top french players he's just a piece down rook fd8 okay this rook is taken rook takes danny boy on play chess says interesting how that can neutralize the little black initiative in the next few moves yes a very nice little move here to neutralize the initiative now as why we can't be reckless in this sort of position because horrible things could happen to us for example if we were a little bit reckless th this is the game Hikaru Nakamura against Etim Bakro played on the 24th of um, September so say say in this position we played knight takes c3 this might not be ideal because uh, of queen f1 check uh, that looks a little bit dangerous for example uh, allowing you know all sorts of things maybe or queen g2 check picking up the bishop no Nanka plays carefully he plays in this position bishop e1 so he's not letting that queen come to f1 we see c4 now knight takes c3 queen b6 and now queen e4 protecting e3 and attacking the bishop not minding the pawn dropping for a moment c takes b3 now rook d2 preparing to get rid of rooks rook takes bishop takes bishop goes to f8 now queen d5 is played 
and the idea it seems just queen b5 next queen b4 queen b5 allowing the check king b1 a6 Naka just takes on b7 queen d6 queen d5 queen goes to h2 rather desperately h5 and black's had enough now he doesn't like playing a piece down particularly um, this is looks to be a very consolidated um, piece up now uh, in fact white might even just munch this pawn with his king next so black actually resigned here so it's very interesting the tactical angle again in this game this simple kind of if you look at it afterwards it seems you know not too advanced but but you know subtle tactics play a key role even for players above 2700 you know these disasters in the opening so it seems you know if we go back to this, this is another disaster in the opening um where you know this c5 you know looks like a good idea in some respects but bang d5 and black looks virtually well he must be lost objectively after this move if bishop takes d5 being played i think we just castle and again you know e4 is such an imminent threat i don't really know what we can do here in this position it looks hopeless again amazing really amazing so let's go on to um another game so Gelfand against Grizzchuk Okay, so Gelfand is having a great tournament again. He's two seven six four at the moment, and so he's facing Grizzchuk two seven eight five. And I think Gelfand has continually proven himself that he was a brilliant challenger for Vichy Anand last year. He's had some amazing tournaments. Uh, so playing White, he plays d four, and Grizzchuk plays e six. And now we see okay it's an invitation to play like a like a french defense but this is rejected with c4 but black hasn't committed to knight f6 and black tries to use that fact bishop b4 check knight d2 is played instead of knight c3 i think if knight c3 possibly um you know i was white against a wgm susan lalich in this line i think it went like this and black gets you know accelerated grip on e4 i managed to draw that game in a british championship uh but it was quite scary but knight d2 given that black hasn't committed to knight f6 it seems an interesting idea so b6 black's trying to you know put this battle for this central e4 square here a3 and now black voluntarily gives up the bishop here queen takes d2 bishop b7 knight f3 and now again you know we don't want to play this if we don't have to if we can get an iron grip on e4 that would seem an ideal idea and in fact f5 is played here so white's assets though and the particularly dangerous one in this structure this pawn structure is this bishop these you know dark squares in black's camp with the pawns on light squares i think it doesn't matter if it's a club game you know at our level or a super gm game there's a lot of fundamentals about this position which can backfire on black even if black's you know super gm this bishop can be a monster sometimes on this diagonal so let's see what will happen with this bishop it's really i think it often decides the fate the fate of the games the structure here shows that if white can get an, a grip on the dark squares later that would be really really good and i think we're in for a very fine positional instructive game here from what i've seen of this game i was really impressed uh, so playing white is boris gelfand so playing black is alexander grizzchuk so we see g3 knight f6 bishop g2 and now both sides castle and now a sort of naughty move a little bit you might think queen e8 a shifty queen just a you know what is this like hack attack or something um and white's traditionally now 
can try and smash black up on the queen side. So b4, which not only vacates the bishop for a nice diagonal here, but it also means c5 in the future might be useful, if not d5 at some point. d6, bishop b2, might be d7. As though the queen staying there, maybe e5 might be useful, maybe, but rook a c1. And we see actually uh, black now playing bishop e4. So the bishop stays out of trouble here, very usefully eyeing some light squares, it would seem. And if this knight ever moves, then we can just snap this guy off. So a4. And now black tries to fix white's pawn. So a5, whilst the rook's on a8, why not try and fix these guys? b5 is, pardon me, a5, b5 is played anyway. Okay, for the moment, there seems to be enough restraint on white in both c5 and d5 seems to be unavailable at the moment to white. But this is quite amazing. Uh, positional treatment here after Queen h5 uh, I think okay so we haven't got our breaks we haven't got our c5 break and we haven't got our d5 break or or haven't we how can we work on one of those which one do we work on there's a lot of positional decisions to be made are we worried about our king about knight g4s are we worried about this queen on h5 so can you guess what white played? This is a positional move here, which pursues a kind of dark square piercing strategy. And the C file, the rook is useful on C1. You know, this is potentially, you know, a liability for black, this whole C file. But how does white actually push this queen side forward? So if I gave you 20 seconds here, what would you play as white here? Well, okay, there's one suggestion about h3 for defense. It's not really necessary to weaken oneself with h3 to deprive knight g4 if knight g4 is not actually doing anything. You could wait for knight g4 and then play h3 and you gain a tempo. Now, d5 could result in a complete lock with e5. You see, black has fixed all our pawns now. We've, you know, we've ended up with locked pawns yeah and that's bad news for this bishop biting granite on e5 so i would say minus 10 points for h3 minus 20 points i think for d5 any other suggestions <laughs> sorry i don't mean to be cruel but you know chess is a cruel game <laughs> positioning i think d5 is even worse than h3 So what would you play here? You, you want to try and use the C file and you want to emphasize this bishop. So how can you make use of this C file and emphasize the bishop? Oh, I don't mean to point anywhere in particular. Rook FE1. Now I'm not going to deduct too many points from Rook FE1 because it doesn't damage the position fundamentally. You haven't frozen any pawns. So that's good news about Rook FE1, but it doesn't seem to do much except maybe wait for any bishop f3, you know, we maybe take like this. So interesting, it's a sort of move Magnus Colson plays. So, okay, I can't deduct any points for that. c5 immediately, that's interesting. c5 immediately, I think there might be a problem here. It, it might be a, a reasonable move. Uh, except it gives black that d5 square and this might be a concern because with a knight on d5 the entry point on the c file is locked out and black furthermore might be preparing now f4 so you might that the king side attack is running on extra fuel no the, the move played is is really interesting okay i'm gonna have to show you now it's actually bishop a3 so it's just preparing to make c5 as effective as possible I, I thought that's pretty neat, bishop a3. So let's see how this progresses. Bishop b7. And it, the bishop vacates, so there's a potential knight attacking the queen here. The queen steps out of the way. So we've still got this c5 on the cards. 
So bishop e4, the queen just goes back curiously to d2, now bishop b, b7. Is there gonna be a draw by repetition here? No, now black commits himself, Grisdruck commits himself to something different. He actually plays a hyper aggressive move going for white's king it seems almost like f4 in the spirit of you know a really aggressive you know dutch defense player this is simply actually just taken although it damages white's king side a little bit and also isolates the h pawn dynamically this g file might actually be useful for white if white can weather the storm here and we see now bishop takes f3 bishop takes f3 so without that knight protecting h2 now g knight g4 threatens mating one this is just taken queen takes g4 king h1 so we've got this g file to work with and imagine this bishop coming back later that g7 could be sensitive but uh, we can't allow e5 so c 5s first to clear up the diagonal then we can get a focal point on g7 potentially queen takes f4 attacking d4 for the moment we have to protect d4 rook f5 and it looks quite dangerous at this point you know with this idea of rook h5 rather crude uh, but the queen is on the second rank here and this next move is very useful resourceful defense to bear in mind across the second rank it's f3 f3 look that's one square for the queen to move the pawn or here so in fact after rook h5 threatening mate in one again we see a very elegant move indeed justified tactically here to defend the king can you see what white plays in this position Uh, if I give you 20 seconds here, starting from now, what does white play in this position? Anyone? How you defend against mates? Right, you can defend against mate with